Delta saying, here's something new. You keep saying from Delaware. It's not from Delaware, my past. I don't care where it come from. You know what I'm saying? But they got something new. It's just a little bit different, but they can store it and they can use it. So when the many problems and abolition come to us, this idea about these different things when you store and take away, whatever it is y'all talking about, I'm saying they're doing the exact same thing. So you would have worked with them on to do what with them. My question is to work with them on to doing what when they're doing is not the same thing you're doing except they got a new idea. That's my question. Um, let me, let me dodge pull up. Uh, I guess I'm going to do a good job answer questions. Um, the, the, what's different here is they're taking the utility's power, they're storing the power, and then they're selling it back to the utility. And that's different from how sort of Virginia law and regulations thought of. Uh, it, they, they correctly describe this. Typically, it's been one-way flow. This is two-way flow. We would need to figure out how do you meet, how do you measure the energy coming back. All of this can be worked out, but there's a number of implementation uh, details that we would like to spend some time working out. Because for an electric utility, the overriding concern we have is reliability, and even a, a you know even a small sort of uh, challenge in the grid can create broader reliability challenges. That's not a criticism of the bill. Uh, maybe it's a criticism of the utility business model. But the reality is we, we try to proceed very cautiously on anything that's new because our fundamental concern is that as close to 100% of time as possible, we flip the switch, the lights come on. Right. And I, I will commit in good faith that we'll do everything we can to work on this because we find it a very interesting idea. Delegate, I you have a question for Delegate. Is that between now and July 1? Bill, is that between now and July 1 you're going to work on this? Or? You need more time. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, this uh, would be something we would uh, hope to be able to address in the long session next year. This and Mr. Chairman, I guess my question, Doug, is kind of, I haven't mean, been on this committee that long, but in my time on this committee, that is a pretty good opportunity for you. And I'm wondering if you're willing to take them up on that and have us not act to send this bill forward with the understanding that they're going to work in good faith with you. Try to ask him to work for next year. I mean, I'm, I'm, well, anytime Mr. Murray says what he just said, I see that as a grand opportunity. Yeah. I mean, I've always had a great relationship with Dominion. They've always helped me with some of the things I've done. And, you know, we've, we've worked on some pro pilot projects. Yeah. I might just say, though, remember, this bill doesn't say they have to do anything. All it says is the SEC is going to develop a program. You know, and so it, even though this bill would take effect technically July 1, it doesn't really take effect until the SEC has a program. And to the extent there are concerns, the SEC can work through those concerns, I would think, with Dominion and, and the folks who understand a lot of the technical elements and the engineering elements of this. So I think what you really are doing by voting for this is buying in to an empowerment of the SEC to put together the program. If they come back and they say they can't do that, they can't do a program, then we're back here you know, trying to figure it out. Let me, but, let me ask the question here. Is, is there a part of the SEC and I can't find them? Either high, high, oh, there it is. You're supposed to sit up here on the front row there in energy. Alright. Cody Walker with Commission staff, and apparently I can't become invisible like what I was trying to do. Right, yeah. Uh, you you've heard, I don't know if you were paying attention to all this, but I figured you would once they said fascinating and all that, but uh, how long does it take the SEC to work through the process such as this? Well, as the bill is drafted, I think it would require a rulemaking. I think typically with a rulemaking, we would have stakeholder meetings and then proposed rules and then a comment period on those proposed rules. And then the commission would issue a final decision. I, I, would, I would guesstimate six to nine months at least. All right. I, I, I swear, I, I thought it, you had to go through some process. All right. Thank you. One, one, one other question. Sorry. I have one question. Delegate Toscano said that as you go through that process, you'll be looking at it, and you have the option of coming back. Or he would come back to us with a with legislation next year. Does it also offer you the opportunity to say this this apparently doesn't work or doesn't fit uh, in our current 
electricity distribution model? I think if the bill is drafted or proposed, it would require that we develop a program, which in my mind would say we could not do that. No, they could not. If we pass a bill, they could not. We would have to develop they a program. Have to do something. Okay. Because I, I think I heard Delgate to say that a little differently, but I may, may have misheard. Maybe I, maybe I misspoke. You. I mean, I would think I, if, if it's impossible to develop a program, then they can't develop a program. But it is true that it does direct them to de right. develop a program. Okay. Now, tech, I think the technical elements suggest that a program can be developed. Right. So that's why it's... Delegate. Delegate. Marshall. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask David Slusky to come up. And, it, it, and one of the things we probably should have done earlier is to tell you, tell the group uh, up here how you got to the point, what you did to uh, <clears throat> to get this to the point about uh, your uh, you know, relationship with the back Commission and how you got that uh, problem here today. Yeah, I appreciate that. It, and I'll try to be more efficient this time. But on the last point, if I may, um, is that we understand the bill and as we hope it was written, the utilities, even if the system is put in place by the commission, uh, the utilities still have to approve the interconnect. So if the utility just doesn't want to play in the sandbox, they can refuse to give it an interconnect, and the customer just doesn't get the opportunity to do it. So I don't think that anything's being imposed on the utilities the way it's drafted, and that's the thought for them. Where this business came from is it came out of a project at the University of Virginia where I sit on the engineering faculty. And, um, we went to the Tobacco Commission and asked for an R&D grant for $2 million to support the development of vehicle to grid technology so that we can commercialize it in Danville. We we're actually making more progress than we had expected. There's some existing technology that's out there. And that's why we came and asked Delegate Toscano to bring this bill this year because we realized that we're in a position in the next several months to actually do grid commerce in Virginia on this project down in Danville. Technology exists. This this, this is, is a real thing, but we can't do it in Virginia in a way that makes any commercial sense without this legislative fix. So you would not be before us today if it had the Tobacco Commission had given you their initial seat money. That's an understatement. Yes, the Tobacco Commission, the Delegate Byron, and the Delegate Marshall in particular were very helpful in us getting the, the vehicle to grid technology to move forward. Mr. Chair. Yes. Were there any pictures of you and Delegate Toscano at the Tobacco Commission? <laughs> I kept telling him, why did he go to speak on our behalf? Tobacco Commission does good work. Thank you. We've been very happy. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, uh, Jim Guy with Virginia Electric Cooperatives um, agreed that this is an interesting bill, but we don't think it's right. <laughs> There are a number of questions, really, really complicated ones uh, and really simple ones. But we had an opportunity to hear from the proponents for the first time less than a week ago. Um, we have technical questions, a lot of them that have to be worked through operational uh, and engineering issues. But there are also some important um, commercial and legal questions. Uh, and the most fundamental one is the, the basic assertion that they're giving electricity free to the grid. Um, frequency regulation is a very particular type of service. It's not the same as uh, peak management. Um, and, and they're being compensated for providing that service at the PJM level. They're coming here asking you to compensate them some more for the same service. It may be that their assertion has some merit to it, but it's not obvious on its face to us that that's the case. Um, and to adopt a double dipping uh, sort of gaming uh, approach without sufficient study, without really understanding this, without having an opportunity to examine it and, and do that in the context of a mandate that the Commission will develop a program. The Commission will develop a program if you tell them to. They can do it and they will do it, um, but it may well, um, may well involve a, a subsidy that you didn't intend. Uh, and that we, thank you very much. The Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I can direct my question to Delegate Marshall. With the money that they received from the Tobacco Commission, the $2 million, it helped us get to this point in the process as far as commercial commercialization, as far as them being able to bring the proposal to us today. Well, I guess the answer would be yes. And so uh, you know, the city of Danville is, uh, provides its own electricity. So S, when he is, uh, his business starts in Danville, he will buy uh, his electricity from the, from the city of Danville. Uh, 
to start with. I think that what this bill will do is so when he's successful and uh, grows outside of the Danville, city of Danville's footprint, that he'll buy from AEP or Dominion or one of the uh, other uh, co-ops. Okay, so the work that he did um, with the money from the Tobacco Commission, um, if it's not approved, the $2 million would have been wasted and he will not get anywhere with the proposed project. Well, I think that's probably, uh, uh, you know, not wasted uh, because he is still going to, you know, even if this bill doesn't pass today, he's still in business. He still, he sets up in Danville and the money goes uh, in the city of Danville that he will go to business and uh, improve this concept. The concept, again, he'll buy electricity from the city of Danville. This is so when he's successful, it expands beyond the money is not wasted. And you do know this section doesn't apply to the city, to the city of Danville because we can't. That's right. It's a muni. It's a muni. So a muni. Uh, city of Danville is a municipal power, so uh, this is only for investor-owned utilities. Okay. Yeah. I have a motion. Well, let me hear from you. Uh, opposed? Uh, yes, I just want to make raise one other point that has been raised. Uh, I, I certainly, I think the technology is, is very interesting. Um, and I agree with Dominion. I think outside of this legislation is a good place for us to take a look at this and uh, see if we can come up with something going into next year. The other thing that I caution you with is, is that it is under net metering. Okay? So what they're getting is full retail rate for something that the utility is not getting compensated for retail rate for. Okay. okay. Thank you. Delegate Marshall. Good report. Substitute motion, Mr. Chairman. Move to gently lay this bill on the table. I'll second it. All right. Uh, uh, non debatable. Members uh, wishing to uh, lay the bill on the table say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. I second. You know, I'm going to hold a hand. My goodness, see the eyes have Do you mind raising a hand? Those, Please. Those. Uh, in favor of laying on the table, raise your hand. Uh, those opposed? Uh, yep. And I, I would say uh, it's a good opportunity for you to work with uh, Dominion. You've heard Dominion AEP and uh, the co ops say that they would work with you. So, Chairman, I Eric, about that. Chairman, uh, Chairman entertain the idea of writing a letter. I'd, su I'd support that, Mr. Chairman, because I think it's a great idea. I just think it's very clear that they need a little bit of, they need time we'll to that. get their hands around it. We'll yeah, I think that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. I'd also make sure they, they include Delby Marshall early on in the discussion. That yeah. Just well, I think that would be important. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a chief co-patron on the bill, so that was yeah. it's great. And, uh, and you have to admit, it was the most, one of the most interesting bills you've heard, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 